This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. So in this video, we're gonna go over how you can do social sharing inside of your bubble application. You do not need to use a plugin to be able to social share. You will be able to do this with the link element. So inside of your bubble application, you're gonna to wanna to have some things set up to be able to showcase the icon as well as any other sort of formatting that you might wanna do on it. Now, if you want, you could just directly with a link element add the actual icon into the link element itself. And to be able to do that, you need to make sure that you are able to select show icon instead of text. And then you'd be able to choose the sort of icon. You will need to change the size of that to display properly. Now, in, in my setup here, what I have is a group and then inside of the group, I have a link element that is on top of an image element. My image element is showing the different icons. Uh, now this setup is a little bit more difficult because for getting the different types of functions you want for conditionals based off of whether something is pressed or hovered, you're gonna need to change the image source. So it is a lot simpler when you're doing it directly in the link element itself to make those changes or you could just use an icon as the element and have the icon be uh, utilized for making those sort of changes but inside of this setup what we have are, are different groups for the different types of social media so inside of facebook here we have our link for facebook if we can get this opened again uh, link for facebook here this is just the link element. Destination is external URL. We're opening it in a new tab. For Facebook, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna just use this URL uh, that we have here as the static value. And then for the equal sign after that, we're saying this URL. So the reason for that is because we actually have this page set up to be a content type of event listing. And inside the database, we have event listing as the uh, data type holds on to an image and a summary, which is a text and a title, which is a text. Now, what we are also making use of is the actual slug value. So just this one example event listing, we have the slug value added into the database. So the way that things work with that, you are going to be able to have when a content type is set and a user is on a specific URL, that actually has the slug in it. And then we are using that, this URL as a dynamic expression. So if you're not familiar with that dynamic expression, you can very easily get into the setup with dynamic expression it's by clicking on insert dynamic data and then just type in URL and then you get this URL. So that's going to basically provide anything that is in the URL at that moment on the page, which when you are live and have a slug value in there would include the slug so that whoever would end up clicking onto the URL that's shared on the social media sites is gonna be brought to that exact page. So when we have it set up for Twitter, uh, Twitter is going to have that static value here and then URL equals this URL. And then we use the ampersand to separate out the text parameter. And for the text parameter, we use the equal sign to give it the value. Now, this is using the current page's event listings and then the summary. For our Pinterest, we're able to have it set up with that static value and then our URL is this URL. We have the ampersand and then the media as a parameter value. And for this one, we're using the event listings image. And then we have an ampersand again with description as a parameter. And with that one, we're using the summary. For our LinkedIn, it's the static section that you see for the LinkedIn portion. And then URL equals this URL. And we have it set up for email as well. And with this email, 
We don't have it set up in here right now for the mail to. So this would be, um, you know, mail to and for my email address as the example, we can just go ahead and set that up there. So what's going to happen with this is when they click on it, their email client will open up. The address will be the address used in the mail to section. And then we have the uh, need for a question mark to separate the subject from the uh, different portions of this parameter as the subject parameter is going to equal. And for this, we're just giving uh, a little bit more, you know, who's the user that's sharing it with them. When they see that subject line, they can you know, feel like they recognize the sender and then shared. And then we just use the event title there. Then after that, once you're finished with the values that you want to use as your subject line, then you can use the ampersand and then body as the parameter equals and then this URL. So that inside the body is just a link basically to the page that they are sharing with them. So what this ends up looking like in LinkedIn, you will end up seeing the uh, LinkedIn portion here. And this image is not what we set inside of the URL that we created to share. It's not the image from that event listing. And, and this is probably associated with the way Bubble is handling things to try to push you into a uh, paid subscription. So again, I was talking without having that uh, visible to you. So inside of that uh, LinkedIn pop up where you're going to see or rather the page where you see what you're about to share. This image should be, once you're live and on a paid subscription to Bubble, it should be the image that you're actually sending through uh, to LinkedIn rather than this default Bubble one. They do that because I'm on a free plan. Uh, inside of Pinterest, Pinterest uh, for some reason is able to actually bypass Bubble settings of forcing users uh, to actually only share when they're on a paid plan. So this is the image. We have the uh, URL up here. And then we also have um, some portion of it that are coming from Bubble itself. These are things that you'll be changing when you have a paid plan. So even though the image comes through other portions of Bubble's uh, forcing us to use a paid plan is uh, coming up. So. When you go into Twitter, you would see Twitter is going to have the description and then the actual link here as that URL. And then if you were on Facebook, uh, you would see it again with this image, but this is the default one because we're not on a paid plan. So once it is on a paid plan, it will come through with the correct image as set in the database for that event listing. Uh, I wouldn't be able to show you the email, but it will just pop up and it will have everything set up properly. All right, in here, we, we have this for link to Messenger. We actually haven't been able to find inside of this application, the link to Messenger. We're, we're not making use of it, uh, so it's not set up to be utilized. But there are other resources out there that you may find to be able to set up your link for the Messenger setup in terms of social sharing there. So hopefully this helps you get started with uh, social sharing inside of your bubble application and doing so without the need of a pub plugin. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.